All right, uh, afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Taman. I think some of you know me. And uh, today, I, and I'm going to be presenting today's uh, UP event, which is about uh, the Python language. Uh, just, just so I have an idea, who here is from uh, CS2223 algorithms? Pretty much everybody? All right, thought so. Okay, so, hope, so what I'm hoping is to give you uh, basically enough of an overview of how the language works and how you do things in it that you'll be able that, to use it uh, on your homework and otherwise in the class. And, this is, and uh, for anyone here who's not in uh, 2223, uh, glad you could join us. And, and, I hope you find, and I hope you find this informative because uh, I personally have found Python to be a pretty good and useful language and uh, hopefully you will too. So uh, just a quick overview. Python's a uh, general purpose, high level language. Uh, the major emphasis on its design is in code readability. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the expression in the community is uh, code is read more often than it's written. So Python code is designed to be as easy to read as possible. Uh, and of course, just some other things about the language. It supports multiple programming paradigms, procedural, object oriented. You can do a little functional programming in it also, it, and it has things like dynamic typing, garbage collection, etc. And of course, it's free and open source. It's a good scripting language. It's also commonly used in larger projects. NASA uses it, Google uses it. A lot of, uh, a lot of open source software is written in it, etc. Uh, just a quick overview. Uh, to install, uh, you can install Python on your own computer. Just go to python.org. If you're on Windows, uh, download the Windows installer, and then it works from there. There's also the documentation link that gets you to the official uh, language documentation. This you'll find to be useful. Uh, if you're on Linux or you're a Mac user, you probably already have Python installed on your computer because uh, some software, because software for those platforms is already written in Python. Uh, one just one quick uh, note on versions. Uh, there are two major versions of Python that are active right now, uh, 2 and 3. Uh, they're mostly the same language, but, they are, but there are slight uh, incompatibilities between the two. Uh, if you're in uh, algorithms class, you're using version 2, which is currently the more common, although 3 is growing in popularity. So you'll just want to make sure you have the right version. Anyways. Now for some actual useful things. This is idle, which is the uh, which is Python's uh, lightweight, very, uh, very simple IDE that ships with the language. Uh, if you're on Windows, you probably want to use this for development. Uh, I use Linux most of the time, and I usually develop Python in Emacs, so that works fine too. By the way, feel free to uh, stop me at any time with questions or anything because uh, I want to make sure that this is addressing all of your questions about how to use the language as well. How would you decide uh, what, which version of Python to use? Uh, yeah. Good question. Well, uh, the major, the major configuration there is basically if you have to, uh, if you have to uh, interface uh, with other software that uses Python 2 or if you need libraries that only exist in Python 2, of which there are still many, then you're going to need to use Python 2. Uh, other, there, there aren't going to be any more, uh, there isn't going to be any further development of Python 2 except for bug fixes. Uh, all new feature development, et cetera, is happening in Python 3. Uh, they release, a, they uh, continue to release a new version every few months. So there are some, so there are some useful features in newer versions of the language. But, but Python 2 still has more code written for it at this point. And again, the languages aren't that different. It's just that uh, there are a few minor incompatibilities that sometimes that means you can't necessarily run a program for one version on the other. Anyways, the canonical hello world example. In Python, this is very simple. Print hello world. 
I'll just save it. .py is the uh, usual uh, file extension for Python programs. And then we, we just run it. And it does exactly what you would think it does. Uh, idle also offers a REPL, read eval print loop, so you can type uh, expressions in and it will evaluate them for you. This is a very useful feature. Uh, Python, of course, is also usable from the command line. Uh, I won't demonstrate this now because doing it on Windows is kind of a pain, but on, uh, but on Linux, I do that all the time. Uh, for the REPL, you just type Python to run a script, type Python followed by the script name. Anyways, I'll go over some basic syntax at this point. Uh, there's the print statement. That prints some, that, uh, prints some form of output to the, screen, to the uh, console. You've already seen this by now. Uh, but, uh, by the way, uh, comments in Python are simply uh, preceded by a uh, hash character. So a, first, so a first thing, well actually the first thing was the print statement, but first thing other than the print statement is variables. Variables in Python are simple, you don't have to declare them. Uh, to make a new variable, you simply assign to it. So a equals two, and it's that simple. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Python's dynamically typed, that means variables don't have types. So you could, we could then uh, reassign a to a string or something, and that would work fine. Function calls. These work pretty much the same as in other languages. Here's an example. The raw input function uh, reads one line of input in from the uh, console. It gets this input. It takes this input a uh, prompt to display. And then you can use that output somewhere else. The comma in a print statement can be used to print more than one thing. They're set, those are separated by a space. I'll run this. Works pretty much the way you'd expect. Next up, the if statement. This again works. Uh, the basic idea behind this is how you, is exactly what you would expect. So, so I'll just say a simple quiz question. One thing to be aware of in Python, uh, white space is significant. Here, you, here you'll notice that uh, this line of code is indented. The indentation is how it knows which things are part of this block. So, works for, it works pretty much the way you'd expect again. Uh, as th there's also, of course, an else statement. <coughs> Uh, there's also an elif statement, which is short for else if. So, which, allow, which allows you to basically uh, choose one of multiple different options. There's no switch statement, instead we just use this. There's also the while loop that, again, most of the stuff I'm going over at this point is things that you will have seen in other languages. It's all pretty standard, but got to start somewhere. So to calculate, say, a triangular number,
plus equals is just C style I augmented assignment. This simply means I equals I plus one. And so we find, and so we calculate a, and so you might use that to calculate, say, a triangular number. There are also for loops. I'll get to those a bit later because they are different from for loops in languages like, say, C. Uh, it's more like a, a Java or PHP style for each loop. You can all. Finally, and this is and this is the last uh, basic syntax thing before I move on to data types. You can define functions. So here's a simple one. It, and you'll notice there there was no explicit uh, declaration of de of uh, a data type here. That's that's because Python again is dynamically typed and uses uh, something called duct typing, which is to say the the only rule regarding uh, what type you can put into a function or such is that whatever operations are in that function have to be supported. So this function this uh, print twice can take anything that can be printed which is to say any object at all. And of course functions can also return values. So so, so again, nothing surprising there. Uh, any questions up until this point? Okay. Uh, now I'll go over data types. This part's slightly more interesting. Well, maybe not the first part, because as you because uh, as you've seen, uh, well, first we'll do numbers. Have you seen these? Well, actually, you've seen integers. Python also has a floating point type. These are two different data types. Uh, it doesn't use floating point arithmetic on integers like some languages do. So there's 0, and then there's 0, 0, .0 and those are uh, different values, although they will compare equal. Uh, basic arithmetic, as you would expect, is supported. Uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication. Uh, two stars are for exponentiation, so that works like that. One thing, one thing to be aware of is how division works. Uh, when, when you divide, if both, if both operands are integers, it will do integer division and round down. However, if either operand is a floating point number, it will do floating point division. This is for Python 2, by the way. Python 3 works differently. Now, we, now, obviously, even if you have integers, you might still want to do floating point division. For that, you can use the float function, which takes a, which takes a, a number, which takes, say, an integer, and converts it to a floating point number. So in that way, you can make sure that floating point division happens. There's also an int function that, get, that converts an integer to a floating point number and rounds down. And by the way, both of these functions can also be used to convert strings to numbers. Yes? Could you put two thirds inside the float function and it has to be one number or the other? Could you put two thirds inside the float function? Well, if you do that, you'll get 0, 0.0 because 2 slash 3 gets you 0 because it does integer division. And then it does float on that. So you have to convert one of the operands before you do the division, if you want that to happen. Uh, yes? Uh, 
double slash. Double slash uh, in Python does it is an explicit integer division operator. Uh, if both operands are integers, it does the same thing as single slash. If either operand is a floating point number, then it still does integer division in that it rounds down, but it returns the result as a float. I have never used this in my life, but it does, but it is a thing that the language supports. Uh, one other thing about Python's uh, typing system is that although it's dynamic, it's also strongly typed. So if you attempt to uh, do, th do things with two, incompa two uh, different incompatible data types, you will get a runtime error. You, uh, if, you, if you wanted to do this, you would have to, if you were trying to get five out of this, you would have to explicitly do a conversion with the int function. There are, so, there are some conversions that happen automatically. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, if you do an arithmetic operation on an integer and a floating point number, you'll get automatic conversion to floating point. But in general, uh, it's not like Perl. You can't, uh, it, it, does keep a, a, uh, it does keep track of which things are which types, and you have to use the right operations on the right types. Next data type, Booleans. There are literals, true, false. Note that these start with capital letters. That's, some, that's an easy mistake to make. Uh, there are the expected comparison operators, double equals, uh, not equals, and so forth. There, uh, there are also uh, and, or, and not operators. These are actually the written out English words, and, or, and not. And and in order do short circuit evaluation. Next up, an actually interesting data type: lists. These are this is Python's array type, but they, but they are uh, much more flexible than arrays in other languages. And basically, Python lists are super useful, and you'll definitely want to know how to use them. The way you make an array literal is simply put the is simply up by you know, like this, put square brackets around it and separate the items with commas. You, uh, and these can be arbitrary expressions, etc. And arrays can contain more than one type of value. Etc. So, Alt P, by the way, uh, in idle, uh, get it, in the idle ref will get you back your last uh, command, like I did just there. So, things that you can do with lists: uh, you can get a particular item out of them using subscripting, like so. The thing that goes in here is the index. Uh, Python arrays start at zero. Uh, so zero gets you the first item. Uh, there are three things in here. So two would get you the last item, and three would get you a runtime error. Another thing you can do with lists is use them in the for loop, which I alluded to earlier. So one might type, for instance, a for item in L. This thing is the list that you're iterating over. This is the name of a variable that you're going to assign to each item in it. And then you do whatever you want in the loop body. And it works like that. Another thing you can do with lists, slicing. Get a uh, sublist out of a larger list. So. Oh, actually, before I mention that, one other useful thing. It's obviously a common uh, pattern in any language to, it, it, to iterate from zero to some number or from one to some number. The way you typically do that in Python is there's a function called range. 
that produces a list of integers. So you, what you can then do is for i in range 10. And that's how you, and that's the uh, idiomatic way in Python of uh, do, of iterating over a uh, no, from zero to some number. This is more common than the. Uh, this is what we do instead of the for i equals zero, i less than whatever, i plus plus idiom that you might find in C. Uh, in case, in case you, in case anyone happens to be wondering, yes, this does allocate memory for that many integer for a list of that many integers. No, this is not strictly necessary. If you don't want to do that, you can use X range instead, which instead of producing a list, produces a special object that you can iterate over. Does the same thing, slightly more efficient, but if you want to work with them as a list, then you uh, want to use range because the output of X range isn't a list, it's just this weird little objects. Anyways, slicing. So you can, so one might, for example, say items uh, zero through four, little colon there. Uh, it's the same as the syntax, is the syntax is similar to uh, subscripting, but you use a colon. And so this is, and so you get a sublist. The, fir the first index is included. The last index is not, as you can see here. This, uh, this has the useful property that this minus this is the number of items in here. Which actually reminds me, uh, another useful function is len. That gives you the length of a list. Other good things to know about slicing. If you omit the first, if you omit the first index, it starts at zero. If you omit the last index, it ends at the end of the list. You can use negative indices. Those count from the end of the list instead of the beginning. And if you omit, and if you omit both indices, you just get a copy of the whole list. Yes? What does what do? X range. It's similar to range uh, in that it, pro in the, it uh, produces a sequence of numbers, but, in but instead of uh, producing a list, it produces a special X range object that, uh, does it, that doesn't support the same operations a list does, but you can use it in a for loop. This is just, in, uh, this is just a little... Uh, the reason you would use this in a for loop is because that way, if this is a very large number, it saves Python from having to allocate a very large list. Mm -hmm. Correct, and I'll be getting a, a bit later into why this is a useful thing. Although I'm sure some of you can already guess. Uh, you can concatenate two lists with the, with the uh, addition operator. Lists actually support a lot of different methods. Uh, in general, when you have a data type and you want to see what methods it supports, you can use the help function. Here I use the word list, but if I inserted an actual list in here, it would do the same thing. And so here's a list of various methods. The, uh, the ones at the beginning that start and end with a double underscores are, uh, are things that use special syntax, like 
well, actually most of the ones I just showed you. There are also some uh, more regular ones. For instance, the append method adds something onto the end of the list. This, get, this gets into the point that lists happen to be mutable, uh, meaning that you can change what's, it, uh, what's in them. Another example of how you might do this and so that works much the way you might expect. Uh, if you now one thing about uh, Python uh, data structures in general is that uh, they use reference semantics which is something you'll be familiar with if you've used Java. Quick demonstration. If I assign a new variable to this list, they're both pointing to the same list. If I modify the, the if I modify it by one name, this is reflected in both of them. If I didn't want this behavior, instead of saying uh, that I could instead have said this, and then you have two different lists there. So, uh, so but one other useful thing about lists is that you can do something called a list comprehension. Which is, uh, which is like a for loop that's inside a list. So, one might, for example, I'll say a public example. So, I'll say I want a list of perfect squares. And it works like so. You can also have it. You can also have additional for loops if you want to have. It, if you want to simulate a nested for loop, you can have an if here where you put a condition on whether something gets included, etc. Well, to give just one more example of an application of this, if I had say a nested list of lists. And suppose, and suppose I want to make a deep copy of this. If I just did the, <coughs> the outer list is a new copy, but it's pointing to the same inner list as the original. So if I modified those, uh, it would get uh, entangled with the original, and we wouldn't want that. So to do a so to do a deep copy of this, and by deep I mean uh, two layers you would use a list comprehension like so. <coughs> and, that, and that list could then be modified without affecting the original. Next data type, uh, actually any questions up till this point? Okay. Next data type, strings. You've already seen these. Strings can be either single quoted or double quoted. There is no difference between the two. Uh, these are regular byte strings. If you prefix with u, you instead get a Unicode string. I don't happen to have any Unicode characters on hand right now, but, that, but if you wanted to uh, use Unicode characters, this is how you would do it. Uh, this is, again, a Python 2 thing. Python 3, they just merged them into one data type. Strings actually support a lot of the same features that lists do. For instance, that you can uh,
you can do the same uh, slicing, subscripting, indexing, etc. If you subscript, there's no separate character type in Python. If you subscript the string, you just get another string that's only uh, one character long. Similarly, you can use them in a for loop. And again, each one gives you one character string. One thing you cannot do with strings that you can do with lists is, uh, you, is uh, strings are immutable, so you can't do, say, you can't do that. If you, if you, uh, if you assign, if you have a variable that has a, a string to it and then you assign something new to that variable, you're not modifying the string. You're simply making a new string and making the variable point to that. Strings support even more methods than lists. Here's how you can find them. Uh, one useful one that I, one useful method that I happen to like is the uh, join method. You uh, you take it, uh, you call it on a string, pass in a list of other items, and then it joins all those items together using the first string here as a separator. This can be empty, in which case they all just get smushed together. I use this method all the time. And of course, there's the stir function. That converts other things such as, uh, num such as uh, well, actually, it converts pretty much anything into a string. Next data type. Tuples, won't spend long on these. These are pretty similar to lists with only a few differences. Uh, their literal syntax uh, uses uh, parentheses rather than uh, brackets. Strictly speaking, the parentheses are optional in many cases as because it's actually the commas that make something a tuple. A tuple of only one item. Uh, has to have a trailing comma. That's how it knows it's a tuple. The empty tuple looks like this. Differences between tuples and strings. Uh, first, tuples are immutable. So, again, just like strings, you can't assign to a tuple. And they don't support as many methods as lists. They're a bit lighter weight, so you can use these when you know when you like have to produce a lot of objects, and you know that you don't have to, and you uh, know that you're not going to need to modify them. Other than that, uh, tuples do support many of the useful features of lists: uh, subscripting, slicing. You can put them in for loops, etc. Last built-in data type for the moment, dictionaries. Dictionaries are super useful. They're actually one of my favorite things in Python. They're Python's implementation of hash tables. But they are much more convenient than, say, Java hash tables. For one thing, they have native syntax. Here's an example of how you might do that. You use uh, curly braces for these because, of course, curly braces don't denote code blocks in Python. Indentation does that. This is, and in this way, you can assign uh, each key to a particular value. And so you can, uh, so, and so you can uh, use subscripting to pull one, any particular item out, etc. cetera. Uh, dictionaries are not ordered. You can, so uh, there's no particular ordering to the items in there. They are mutable, so you can
and again, there's no defined ordering. So if you so if you uh, convert so if you print out a dictionary or iterate over it or what have you, the stuff could come out in any order. There's uh, no rules as to what order it'll come out in. You could there are ways to get around this by sorting, but yeah. One other uh, and of course. Oh yeah, if you put a dictionary through a for loop, uh, A, like I said, the order uh, is undefined, it can be anything, but B, it iterates over the keys. If you want to iterate over the uh, if you want to uh, get the values, there are a few ways you can do this. The obvious one is like so. If you just want the values, you can call the dot values method. That gets you a list of the values. Similarly, dot keys gets you a list of the keys. And dot items gets you a list of key value tuples. What, now, one useful thing, the useful thing about the items method is that Python supports uh, unpacking assignment. And what that means is if you have a tuple or a list or any other iterable, you can then type, uh, you can then assign to multiple variables separated by commas, and so it unpacks them. If the, if the number of things in the tuple doesn't match the number of variables, you get a runtime error. So if you wanted to iterate over both the keys and the values, you can use tuple unpacking in the for loop on the items method. like so. And dictionaries have other methods also. Uh, those are the most useful Python built-in data types. Uh, any questions at this point? Okay, uh, next thing I'll go over, imports and library modules. Python has a ginormous standard library, uh, larger even than Java's. Most things that you would uh, want, that you would uh, generally need to do in the course of programming, there's probably a built-in uh, library module for it. Okay, uh, here's the library reference. This is a good thing to look at. And these are all of the different packages. There's a lot in there. So I'll, use, so I'll give one example of how you might use this. Uh, I'm going to import, say, the math module. This incorporates based various uh, floating point arithmetic functions, things like trigonometric functions, constants for pi and e, et cetera. The way you import something is pretty simple. Just type import followed by the name of the module. And then you, I can use all the things in the module. math.py, math.square root 4, square root always returns a floating point number, etc. If you If I wanted to see everything that was in this module, well, there are actually two different things I can do. I can find it in here. Or I can type help math. You can only do this after you import it. And this gets you all of the functions and things that are part of this module. If you if you need a mo module for something and you don't find it in the standard library, 
A good place to look is the uh, Python package index, also known as the cheese shop, which is a searchable archive of various uh, things. For instance, uh, what, would be, excuse me, what would be something that might be uh, Suppose I need, say, a telephony package. Here are, very, and here are various packages for that, etc. Basically, it, and there are like literally tens of thousands of packages in here. If you need to do something, somebody probably wrote a package for it. Python has good library support. You can, also, uh, you can also create your own modules, which you can import. The way this works is fairly simple. Just make a file. Uh, I'll make some silly function. I'll also create a, a uh, constant. I'll save this. In, the, in my current working directory, and then I can simply type, and it's in there. And if I type help sample, you can see a list of all the things that are in here. There would be actual uh, descriptive things if I had written documentation strings for the items in here. But uh, I didn't do that. It's a useful thing to do, though. One, uh, one thing to note is that, uh, imp is that uh, if you import a script, uh, importing a file runs it. So if you have like a script in here, and, so, and someone uh, imports it, then the script will run. A way to get around this is by using, a is by using the uh, main guard, which which basically you simply put that around the part that's actually a script. And that will, this will only run it if it's being run as the main script, not if it's being imported. Uh, to, to, uh, uh, anyways, it's a good idea. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If you if you run if you just run this as a script, uh, it will just work. It, uh, if you if you run this as a script, it'll do the thing that's here. It'll print hello. However, if you import this, then it won't do this part. Whereas if you didn't have this here, then it would uh, then if you imported this, this part would run, which might not be desirable because you might be writing a library module and this might be test code for it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I obviously won't go over the whole standard library, but a few uh, useful mo uh, modules that you might want to be aware of. RE is the regular expression module. This obviously is very heavily used, especially if you're doing scripting. Sys imports various uh, things that give you runtime details of the program. One thing that's commonly used is sys.argv. Whoops. That gave me the list help because sys.argv is a list. Shouldn't have done that. That was silly, but. This gives you the list of the command line arguments that were passed to your Python script. The first one is actually the, the name of the script itself. Any following ones are things that were passed to the script. 
and then here there were none. Uh, one more useful module is time it. This lets you know how long it takes something to run. So if I make, say, a So if we want to see how long it takes to sort a list, that calculates the length of time it takes to run something. Uh, any questions at this point? Yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you put, yeah. Uh, functions in Python are first class objects, so you could, up, so you could uh, pass a, an actual uh, function in here by name and it would work. But in this particular case, the function would have to have no arguments because otherwise it wouldn't know what to put in there. This thing has the ability that you can simply pass in a string that happens to be valid Python code and it will run that code for you. Uh, it's, at this point it's 12.48 and I believe there is a class in here after us, so uh, I'm going to wrap things up now. Uh, are there any final questions? Yes? There is not time to do those in two minutes. Okay, I'll do a very, very, very short version. You declare a class like so. Inside it, you define methods. The init method is the constructor. Every method has to have a first parameter called self. Well, it doesn't have to be called that, but it should be. That's the object itself. And it can have other arguments also. There are no uh, built-in fields. Uh, an object attributes can simply be whatever you want. So that's how you define a class. You can then instantiate it like so. And that's the basics of it. Again, sorry, I don't have time to explain that in more detail. I just said you don't. You could, it, I could, for instance, uh, p dot. just assign some new attribute to some object and it just works. These are actually all implemented by dictionaries under the hood. Uh, mm -hmm. Any further questions? You, uh, are you asking, can you dynamically get uh, an a, a method of an object by name? Uh, there, there, there is a way you can dy dynamically uh, get a particular attribute of an object by name. That's the get adder function uh, object, and then you pass in the name as a string. And that gets you a method. This is what a method looks like when you print it out. And then we run that. And that's how you would do something like that. All right, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, this will all be on YouTube. And uh, good luck on your first homework. <laughs>